I was going to a Morehouse game, going to meet up with some of her bros, and my car got towed. One of her friends actually had her car towed before, so she was like, I know where your car probably is, and they took me to the tow spot. So that's how we actually met. She's gonna second argue time. different. It's the second time. You know what? If you can't remember the first time, it didn't happen. I'm telling you what the first time what was. What was it? I told you we it were at a game at Albany. It wasn't at Albany. Was my memory's stalker. better she, than his. No, see, she, she just admits that she's a stalker. She, I said she, my memory's better. She than found me. me. I didn't know who she was. You yes, you she did. She was. You asked people. You used your investigative skills to find out who I was. You helped me go find my car. <laughs> That was about it. Girl, I got the bomb place to watch. I got us for and never knowing what the arms say. But you can get my time anytime. You the bomb. Hey, um, people in my bridal parties, my god sister Tanya. Um, we all went to school together, so pretty much, um, my friend Kedon, we went to school together. We were also, me and Tanya were in, and Kedon were in the band together too. Um, Alita, we were in the band together. Went to Spelman as well, and my god sister, my other god sister Tanya, uh, we used to work together um, at Hulan. So I have um, my frat brother uh, Jarvis, uh, A.K.A. Mr. Danger. So um, that's that's my road dog. That's that's probably my thickest brother right there. Um, I have Ernest Mitchell. That's one of my. Um, we went to school together. That's my chapter fraternity brother um both of us in law enforcement together uh, i have cedric alexander that's my um, another one of my best friends been knowing each other for the longest he's also one of the djs here in atlanta um my youngest brother ryan and you know it's family and then i have my fraternity line brother in kappa and that's great gregory fisher and that's another one of my road dogs Well, for me, I, I, if I was, you know, getting married, I wanted to make sure it was in a church. That's just something I guess that would be special to me. And um, we have this brand new, lovely church that we just got. <laughs> so, couldn't think of anybody, any other place. Well, hopefully, I want to be somewhere overseas. Hopefully, I'll be working on my doctorate. Me too. But when I get my doctorate degree, anybody who talks to me, I don't care if I'm in a line at McDonald's. Uh, Dr. Bellamy, your fries and shake array. Thank you, thank you. Let it be known. Oh, well, I mean, I think she's beautiful anyway. So I I haven't seen her in her wedding dress. I know I helped pick it out, but I haven't seen her in it. But um, I mean, I think she's beautiful, you know, whatever she has on. So I'm gonna hold it together. I'm a pretty tough dude, so I don't think I'm gonna be crying. I might whisper to her but like, you know, you look hot right now. So I can't get too carried away because I'm in church. He did not pick up my wedding dress. He may have saw it. He paid for it. He did not pick it out. He did not pick it out, no. <laughs> I mean, I just, it was just, I knew what type of style of a dress I wanted, that I wanted to bling the full ball gown. Um, I think it was maybe the third dress that I tried on. Fourth, maybe. Third or fourth dress, yeah.
Actually, the proposal happened on Christmas. It was Christmas Day. We were in Wilmington, North Carolina at his aunt's house. Um, and it was right after we opened up most of the, pretty much all the gifts and that he proposed to me. You know, everybody had finished opening all their presents or whatever, and she had one more present left. And when she opened it, uh, kind of asked her the question there. I would say she was surprised a little bit, but knowing her, that's probably the only thing that she was thinking about. She was like, I know you got something up his sleeve. And I, I know how she is. She's she's very um, a goal-oriented person. So if, she, if she's kind of hinting towards something, that's the only thing that she's thinking about. So it, it could have been me giving her a box of chicken and she was like, it's a ring in this box. I know it is. I do believe that if we didn't have the same interest in music, it would be a little bit hard for us um, because we are always going somewhere to a band organization, going doing something with the band. And I think that, you know, I've been in other situations where that's been stressful for someone else. Always, you know, hopping on a bus to go somewhere <laughs> with the band and helping out. So I think that's what kind of keeps us together. Both of us play. so. Um... Both of us play piano. I play just about every instrument, except for flute and piccolo. I don't think a grown man should play flute and piccolo. We play just about every percussion instrument, so you know we really click with music. If we argue about everything during the day, you know we'll get either on band or music, and whatever we were arguing about, kind of sideline until we can calmly talk it out. first met him. I'm telling you it was the second time. <laughs> Even though that's still a debate, I think that's when I realized he was probably the one. I think it was just his personality. We both kind of had the same type of personality, that outgoing, fun type thing. Well, in 2006, I was in a, I was in a motorcycle accident and um, it caused me to have to have my left leg amputated. So it was below the knee and um, I know when I got to the hospital, um, right as soon as I got to the hospital, I passed out, and I was out for like a day and a half. And when I woke up um, the following day, she was there. And um, one thing that I didn't know is the whole time I was in the hospital for like three and a half months, and the whole time I was in the hospital, Tawana didn't leave the hospital not once. It's my personality. I just when I see somebody in need, that's that's how I am with you know a lot of people. Um, I just. I just didn't want to leave him because I know it was, you know, that that's a hard type of situation to be in, you know, and, you know, a lot of his family was out of town. His mom still had to deal with his brother. I know she was there, but, you know, nobody was able to be there all the time with him. And it was just a natural instinct for me to be there 24-7 pretty much. I mean, I, I kind of figured it was something, you know, it was something a little bit special to, the, to that. So, uh, cause a lot of, a lot of, I've had a, a lot of friends that, you know, real close friends that didn't come see me that much, but she didn't leave the hospital. So that was probably what started the spark. I want to be a better woman for him because he does so much for me without me asking. 
his willingness to do whatever it is. Six years ago, I moved up here, and um, when I moved up here, the one thing that Torrance always says about his wife now, one thing he always says back when everybody knows the history of Torrance when he had his accident, to bring it up, the one thing that Torrance always says, he remembers the first person he saw when he woke up was this woman that's sitting at his side right now. And that, that always stuck, and that means a lot. And that same woman is here today. So, you know, that's something that Torrance always remembers, and, and he speaks about that a lot. Um, you know, that, that Tawana has always been there by his side. She's the first person that, that he saw when he woke up, and she was there, she wouldn't leave the hospital, she would send other people out to, to go get things for him or her, but she would never leave his side. So it's only right for them to be in the position that they're in today. His willingness to help others, making sure that, you know, people are safe, they're just caring about him, his, you know, his family, just caring about everybody that's around him. I think that's what I admire about him. Her creativity. Now, I will say this, even though she gets on my last nerves with it, Tawana is very creative. She, uh, she has certain visions, you know, sometimes her vision is a little, Fairy tale, you know, out there is like, how in the devil are you planning to pull that off? It's pretty neat. So she has a great imagination, and her imagination and her um, that little spark that she has, it it pushes me sometimes to do, you know, to think outside of the box for certain stuff. car hadn't got towed. <laughs> if my car had got towed, we would have never met. Well, we probably would still met because if, in our organization, I'm, I'm kind of popular in the, in the group and, you know, with my school or whatever, so I still said she was a stalker. You know, she, you know, very uh, well known with the ladies in my day. Marching band, I'm telling you. <laughs> If we didn't meet at that first game, then we, put, we wouldn't have met the second time. I'm telling you, I met, met the first time at a Morehouse game in Albany. Well, I mean, because we're all band family, so that's how we are. So, I mean, that still probably could have happened regardless. It, it, you know, if you're a band person, it's like, oh, you're, you're immediately family. Because if anything happens, I know where to find you. <laughs>